mess in your life, both spiritually and personally. Um, we read from James chapter 1, verse 25. It just simply says this. It says, but if you look carefully into the perfect law, which is a reference to scriptures, if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free and you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. All right? Um, I want all of us to experience God's blessing within our lives. And I know the key to finding that lies within the text of the Bible. Um, so what we are doing is over the next month or 12, mo or 12 months, each month we will take a different topic and we will try to learn about that topic, implement it into our lives, and hopefully help you implement it um, into your life, both spiritually, personally, and it will lead to success. So what you have is every month you will get a new card. Several, most of you got last week, several of you got this week. What these are is to help you devotionally, all right? So this month we are covering the topic of a growing faith, that one of the traits of success, and the one everything else really builds off of is you have to be growing spiritually. It's something you have to be doing in your life. So you have a card. This card each month will tell you what the topic is. It will kind of give you a brief description on the bottom and on the back of how to implement that topic into your life and some of the details of it. And it will also provide you scriptures that I want to highly encourage you to start reading on a daily basis to implement a devotion time into your life so you can start thinking on those things, praying on those things, and allow God to work in your life to start showing you those things during the month that you can actually take the things you're learning and implement them into real life. So, quick question here. Last week, you received these cards. Those of you that did, how many of you started reading this pretty regularly last week? That's better than normal. That's probably about 25% of you. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you. Good job, Stephen. We're proud of you. Here's what we're going to tell you. Uh, you need to be taking this stuff and implementing it. You need to be reading it. If you have kids, as I shared last week, very valuable resource for you. So in my family, what we've done is outside my own personal time of reading these, each night this week, we've just taken one of these scriptures and we've read it before bed and kind of talked about it a little bit as a family of what that scripture means. And it's just kind of put it in front of your kids' uh, eyes and listening to your wisdom some on that and having a little discussion as a family before you pray and go to bed. Um, and it just keeps reinforcing that to them because if you can teach your kids these 12 traits, through the next year, it will be highly valuable for them in their lives, both spiritually and personally. Um, you build a solid biblical foundation for them that will benefit them the rest of their lives. So um, take these, make sure you are using these. These are going to be out on the table all month, every month. You can find them. If you lose them, pick up a new one, put it in your car, put it next to your bed, something so it reminds you to take some time to read those things and continually have a devotion with God. Um, so in the month of September, as I have referenced there, we are talking about having a growing faith. One of the key traits of success is having a growing faith. Last week, um, Jesus introduced the whole topic of why it's important to have a growing faith. This week, we're going to look at a little bit different how Jesus actually grows our faith in the process he uses that. But before we get there, let me introduce you to a guy. His name is Jamie Dury. How many of you know who this guy is? Does anybody know who this guy is? Anybody? One. You watch HGTV, don't you? Okay, we have one HGTV. Okay. Jamie Dury, here is who he is. Um, he's an Australian gardener, and he's a landscape designer. Um, here are some of his accomplishments. He is an owner of an incredibly large landscaping company. That's one of the things he has. He's a television host over in Australia, but also here in America. If you watch, Does anybody watch HGTV outside of Shelley? Oh, there's quite a few of you, so some others should know other than Shelley. So HGTV, he's one of the TV hosts of one, uh, several of the shows. He's also a producer and produces several other shows on HGTV and around the world. Um, he has written 11 New York Times best-selling books on gardening. Um, he has won 34 World Landscaping Design Awards. And currently, he is focusing on large-scale resorts and hotels with projects currently in 12 different countries around the world. Okay? This guy is pretty much known as the top gardener and the guy that knows about gardening and designs in the world currently. I'm just going to show you eight pictures of some of the stuff he does, just so you get an idea of what he does. So here they are. Here's eight of them. This is one of his, the garden in the background. That's actually my backyard, so I had him come in, design it, and we have that. So it's a beautiful, relaxing thing right next to the pool and all. So that's one. Go to the next one. Just another one. Just incredible landscape. I'm a landscaping guy, so I like, like, yard stuff and all, so I'm always impressed by these things. Go to the next one. All cactuses, um, the way he designed those. Next beautiful flower garden. 
Okay, incredible flower garden. Next one. Um, I think this is one like in the shows he goes to that he sets up and designs like in a show and then these are things they get awarded on. So that's just one of his show uh, prep ones. Next one. Okay, does anyone have those chairs? Or sat in one of those chairs? Are they comfortable? Does anyone know? Are they comfortable? Okay, so I'd think about getting one of those. They're kind of cool. They're like little baskets you sit in. Okay, next one. Here's just a backyard. The cool thing about him is he does do like simpler designs for like more practical situations like in everyday person's backyards, not necessarily you're worth $25 million and he just does that. He gives you designs that work in a little bit smaller scale and you'll see I think in the next picture, just a smaller scale back. It's pretty big, but it's just totally gardened. Um, and it's got like that meeting room in the back and just that's all of his work, a design of his. And that might have been the last one. Is there one more? Okay, that's all of them. That's who he is, that's what he does. So last week, again, as I said, Jesus introduces this concept of spiritual growth. And basically what he says is this, after last week's part of the scripture, is he says, if you are growing spiritually, you will produce fruit in your life for the kingdom of God. But then he also says, if you're not growing spiritually, you can do nothing in your life of lasting value. Meaning the only things you can do here are temporal and they have no real lasting eternal value if you are not growing spiritually. Today, as I said, he's going to introduce this. How does God grow us? Okay? Now, we've talked about the development here, starting the devotional time we talked about last week and some of those things. But how does God interact with us to grow us? And I want to read to you from John chapter 15. Last week we read scriptures 5 through 8. This week we're going to jump ahead of those, actually, and go back to 1 through 4. And here's what he says. He says, I am the true grapevine. And this is Jesus. So Jesus says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Okay? Now, this process that God uh, talks about for growing us, he relates to the gardening concept of pruning. Now, how many of you are good pruners knowing the technical ways of doing it? Anybody? We have like two. Okay, that's good. So here's what I did this week. Jesus is relating this to pruning of how God grows us. So I spent about four hours this week, just because it started to interest me, reading articles, watching videos, all sorts of things about how to prune properly. And there's several things I learned. But the first thing that caught my attention about pruning is this. It makes no logical sense. Okay? When you think about it. Pruning is essentially this. You take clippers to your plants and you cut parts of the plants off. And it's supposed to make your plant healthier and grow it larger. Okay? That doesn't make logical sense. Usually if you want things to be healthier and larger, you don't go cut it and hack at the pieces. But that's what pruning does. And the wonderful thing of pruning is it actually works. It's how God designed plants and it actually works. So let me just give you a little information since you're not pruners about, as they refer to in everything I read, the art of pruning. Okay, so now last week you learned I'm a farmer, that I know everything about farming. If you want to start a farm, I can help you get your crops planted and figure all that. Now I can prune your landscaping if you want because I'm an expert in it um, after this week's uh, prep for this sermon. So here's the little things you need to know about the art of pruning. Number one is this. It is not random cutting. How many of you take sh um, the uh, cutters, the shears, and kind of cut your bushes? And so How many of you use those? I've used those. What are those things called? The hedgers? Hedge, hedge trimmers. Yeah, no, that's not how it works. So you have your hedgers, and you take those, and you plug them in, and you just slice them down. And I learned... Through this thing, that's not the healthiest thing for your bushes and for your plants. Um, but what pruning is, it's a very specific process of removing very specific parts of the plant in a very specific way. Like it gets down to even like the angles that you're supposed to cut on and all to prevent like disease and stuff starting in your plant so you don't cut them wrong. But it's very specific in everything it does. Now, if you prune your things correctly, Here's some of the results. One of the results can be your flowering plants will continually produce new flowers. Like nonstop until the season's over, they'll keep producing more and more flowers if you do it correctly. Another thing that will result from correct pruning is if you have a plant that is weak or sick or diseased, it will actually nurse it back to health. 
and it will strengthen it and get it back to being healthy. Or the other thing that can happen is this. If you have a plant that has overgrowth, so it's just growing over and it's like growing out the one side or whatever, through pruning properly, what you can do is you can get that uh, plant to be strengthened and to have long-term health. Where if you don't prune it, it will die earlier, several years earlier, they've actually found. Um, if you do not prune them, if you prune them correctly, it makes them stronger, it makes them healthier for the long term. Now, Jesus uses this concept of pruning to illustrate how God works in us to grow us spiritually. So this morning, I just want to cover three ways God uses spiritual pruning in our lives to grow us in ways that we have to open ourselves up and allow God to actually uh, prune us in these ways so that we can become healthier, more of the people who God called us to be. All right? The first thing we see in spiritual pruning is this. God will cut out things that are dead in your life to promote new growth. So with each of these, I just show you a picture of a plan. If you look at this one, you can tell here, in this bush, it's actually healthy, about two-thirds of it, but about a third of it is completely dead. It's brown, okay? So in that situation, you would go over, because that part is dead of the plant, you would go over and you would actually clip that dead part off. So you can take that off and it allows more aeration. See, I learned a lot of stuff. More aeration and it allows more sunlight into that area, and it would actually grow back out with a healthy plant if you cut off that dead part. God will do the same thing spiritually in your life. What he does in this way is this. You have several dead things in your life. When you become a Christian, that God has to start cutting away. God has to start taking out of your life because it's taking up space that does you no good and it actually hurts you and it affects your health. And God goes, I have to cut this stuff out in order to promote new growth in you to promote a healthiness in you, promote long-term health in you. Some of those things he will cut out when he's pruning you is this, bad habits, okay? All of us probably have some habits that are not healthy. All of us probably have habits that are dead things in us that don't do us any benefit whatsoever, uh, whatsoever but they are things we continually do because they're just habits. And one of the things you will see is God will come in and he will snip those things out. He will do something to stir that up and to try to remove that habit from your life. If you are a Christian in here and you've been a Christian for, let's say, anywhere five years and beyond, you should be able to look back at your life and see some habits that God has started to snip out of your life. Have you not? Things you used to do that you thought were beneficial or whatever, but God has realized are dead things in you that need to just go so something new can come in and God snips them. Other things you will have is this. God will snip out uh, learned defense mechanisms. What I mean by defense mechanisms is this. All of us as humans, when we get hurt, we learn defense mechanisms to try to prevent that hurt from ever happening again. Okay? And it's a natural thing that our minds do, our, our brains do, is they try to protect us from getting hurt in the same way twice because we don't want to experience that pain again. So we have these learned defense mechanisms in our lives. And I'm not just meaning like reactionary, like I touch something hot and I pull away. It's usually life experiences and we learn different ways to, re, uh, to uh, get away from situations that look like the one that hurt us before. So we, we get these defense mechanisms and we respond in certain ways without really knowing why we're responding that way, but you just do it instinctively because your body is making you, okay? Some of those defense mechanisms become very detrimental to you um, as you grow. So a lot of them are learned when we're kids and when we're teenagers. And if you do not get rid of them, they become extremely detrimental to your future as an adult. And what God will do is he will come in and he will see those things are dead. They have no benefit to you and they are hurting you and he will clip them out. And he starts to clip those things out and he starts to change you so new life can come into your life. Another area he will do it, bitterness and unforgiveness. If you have bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart towards other people, those are dead works. They are dead things in your life that God has to come in and clip out and go, those things need to be removed so something healthy can grow there. You are taking too much of your heart, you're taking too much of you, and it's being poured into this bitterness and unforgiveness, and I need to clip it out so that you can grow, all right? That is how God takes dead things, clips them out, prunes them out of your life to promote new growth in your life. Now, here's a hard part of this pruning. When God prunes the dead things out, this is why this one's hard to go through, is God starts to take things away from us we've become accustomed to that become our pattern things that are just kind of things that we snuggle up against go it's always been there in my life and it just kind of brings me some security even though it's dead and so because we've become accustomed to it when god clips it out it leads to new things in our life and that's scary 
It's unpredictable. It's things we don't know how the future is going to be without that thing in our life. And so we get scared at times and we try to prevent God from actually pruning those things. But the healthiest thing for us is, is this. Your life looks like that bush. The healthiest thing for you to do is to have God come in there and clip out that dead part and go, you need to grow something new. Okay, that's the first way God prunes us. The second part of God's pruning of us is this. He cuts things out that are diseased, that are diseased to prevent future sickness. Okay? So next thing he will do, you have some things that are dead. You have other things that aren't quite dead yet, but they're diseased. So if you look at this flower here, you can see this. Can you see the diseased part on this flower? You have a rose, you have a leaf. If you have roses, you've seen this before. You have the disease on the, on the leaf, and it's those little black dots that eventually start spreading and spreading. And if you truly want to keep that rose healthy, what you have to do is uh, those leaves that have the black dots, you go and you snip them off. You cut off the diseased ones and protect the rest of the plant. So those leaves are still alive, but you know they're going to be dead, and if you don't remove them, they're going to kill the rest of the plant. So you have to snip them out. And God will do the same thing in our spiritual lives. He will look at things, determine they're diseased, and he will snip them out, he will take them out, he will prune them from your life so that you don't get sicker down the road. Some of those things he will prune are this, unhealthy relationships. You have relationships in your life that you look at that you go, they're not bad, they're okay, but God looks at them and goes, they're diseased. Um, and, and these relationships need to end. I need to prune these out of your life and you're sitting there going, but there's still something good to it. And God's going, yeah, but it's not going to stay good. Uh, I need to prune these things out. Um, other things he does is unhealthy activities that God will prune out of your life. Activities, what I call unhealthy ones, are this. Things you do where your uh, temptation level goes up, that you have a hard time resisting doing things you know God want, wants you to do in those situations. So you participate in activities that you know are just putting yourself in a spot that you know Satan can tempt you, and most likely you're going to give in. And what God will do as your loving father is God will come in as a gardener and go, that's an area, it's not necessarily bad in and of itself, but for you, it's diseased on you right now, and I need to snip that out. And I need to remove that, because if I don't, it's going to lead to worse results down the road. Another way he does this, unhealthy desires. You have desires for things that you know you shouldn't have. Um, easy, big scope ones we can look at is desire for worldly things versus desire for godly things. And God will come in sometimes and snip out these things that are desires of your worldly side, snip them out so you focus on the healthy side, which are the things of God's desires. So God, as your gardener, as your pruner, will come in and he will prune those disease things out that will prevent um, disease, from that disease from taking you over and causing long-term health issues to you. Now, let me tell you what the hardest part of this one is. God comes in and prunes things that you don't think need to be pruned yet. And he removes them, and you don't know why he's removing them, and you never really figure out why he's removing them until well after the event, and you can look back and you can go, oh, thank God he took that out of my life. Because it could have ended here. Um, those of you who are Christians, how many of you have seen God prune you this way? Okay? What makes these hard in the midst of it, you can come up with reasons of why God shouldn't prune it. You can come up with logical reasons, go, this is healthy, but God being able to see the big picture looks at it and goes, no, it's not. Um, and if you continue this in your life and you continue to allow this in your life, it's going to lead to sickness and it's going to kill you at some point. I need to get it out of there. So when God prunes us this way, a lot of times we have a lot of resistance because we don't understand what we're being protected from. And the hard part is, some of those things, we never even get to understand what we're being protected from. And they're not always the easiest things in life to accept, but God, if you understand that he's your loving gardener, he's your loving father, you trust that he knows best. So when he looks at that plant, that plant might have no idea anything's wrong with it, because there's a beautiful rose there. We as a gardener can look at that and go, but man, there's like four leaves on there that have a lot of disease. And if I don't get those off of there, I'm not going to have a rose bush in another four weeks. So I'm going to go in and snip it. And that plant might be sitting there going, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm looking good. I'm looking good. And I'm going, you're going to die if I don't do this. God will do that in our spiritual lives as well. He comes in and he prunes diseased areas of our lives. The third way God prunes us is this. He cuts back overgrowth to ensure long-term health for us. He'll cut back overgrowth. Now, this one's even more difficult 
because this is healthy areas of your life, but they become unhealthy to you because you let them grow too much. Um, let me give you some examples of this. Um, we have strengths. All of us have some strengths. If we get too comfortable in our strengths, what happens is, is we stop stretching ourselves. Um, this one is especially true as we grow older, is we stop expanding, we stop learning, we stop growing, we stop doing things that we don't think we're good at, and we stop taking chances and stretching ourselves, and we start sticking to only the things we think we do well and pursuing those and growing in those, and that's all we pursue. And you eventually end up with something that was probably a beautiful garden at some point. Now it's overgrown and looks like garbage. And that can happen in our spiritual lives with our strengths. Um, let me give you some examples of how that works. Um, some of the ways it works is some of us have this, the, uh, the gift or the strength of knowledge. You can retain lots of information. You can grow in that stuff. You can know the word of God left and right. You can memorize scripture. You can have it all together. But at the same time, you neglect empathy. And so you might have this incredible strength, but it's overgrown and you can't empathize with people and you become someone who's kind of a bully with information, and you just beat people up with information without ever having empathy for them. And so something that is wonderful, something that is good, can't be used the way God desired it because you're not well-rounded. Does that make sense? And God will come in and cut some of that back and go, you know what, stop spending your time so much there, and you need to go be well-rounded, and you need to start learning how to grow over here so you keep everything looking nice. Um, some of us will have the gift of love or the strength of love. We just naturally can love people well, and, and we love the people we come in contact with, but we start to neglect truth. And so our love overwhelms us from teaching truth. And so we sit there and we go, but I love, I love, I love, and you're going, but at the same time, you don't speak truth. And part of being a healthy, well-rounded Christian is loving but also speaking truth, which is what we see in Jesus, is he loved, but he spoke truth. And so you can overgrow in an area that starts to make you unhealthy, especially long term. Another area you can get into is compassion. As you can have great compassion for how people feel, what they're going through, and you can have that compassion and stuff like that. But what you start to do is you start to enable people. Um, and we see this a lot of times in like people are suffering from like drug addictions and different addictions in their life. People that truly have compassion for people are just naturally um, towards those people and go, I have compassion, but you can actually start to basically promote that behavior in them because you don't let them suffer the consequences. So you start to become an enabler with compassion, which is a good thing, but it becomes too overgrown. And God sometimes comes in and he cuts those things down and go, you have to become more well-rounded so you can do greater work for me. And God will come in to do those things. What we need to understand is this. Many times, the things that got you to where you are today are not the things that you need to get you to where you need to be next in your life. And this is a hard thing to accept because we like doing things we're good at, okay? But understand, the things that got you, and let's talk about spiritually for a second. The things that got you spiritually to where you are today are not necessarily things you need to get you to where you need to be tomorrow, okay? The things when I first became a Christian that I needed in my life for the first five years or so that got me to where I grew in my spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ are not the things I still use today 20 years later. They're different things. They're different things God has focused me on and moved me on to, different uh, procedures in my life and devotional things in my life that I have changed. If I stayed doing the same things I did in the first five years, I would still be spiritually at the maturity that I was five years into it. God wants to change you. God wants to take the overgrowth, cut it back sometimes, so you expand other areas and become well-rounded. And we have to be open to that, okay? So what got you to where you are today isn't necessarily the same things you need to get you to where you need to be tomorrow. The final point I want to make this morning is this. We have to make sure we don't get in the way of God pruning others, okay? And this is a mistake a lot of us make. We have to make sure we don't get in the way of God pruning others. If I went to Jamie's house, so if I went to this guy's house, one of the leading gardeners in the world, and I walked through his flower garden, and as I walked through with him, I started to give him tips of how he could do it better, okay? So I'm walking through with Jamie. I'm like, Jamie, those are nice flowers. I probably would have planted these. And you see those over there? You did a good job with those, but if you just cut them this way, they would look better. What would you think of me? Okay, you would think I'm an arrogant, ignorant fool. Would you not? 
you would. If I'm around with a renowned gardener, you might think this already. So some of you are like, I don't really think that. But hey, uh, if I'm walking with a world-renowned gardener, and I'm walking through his garden, and I have the, the, uh, the gall to say, hey, buddy, you could do this differently. I would have done it this way. You would look at me and go, I'm nuts. I'm arrogant. I am stupid. I'm a fool. And you would go, that is ridiculous for you to think you have anything to teach that man. All right? You're just a minister. You cut a few little things in your front yard on the bushes. That's all you do. This guy's life is devoted to this. We have to make sure we do not do the same thing to God, which is this. Sometimes God's pruning other people in our lives. He's cutting away dead things. He's cutting away diseased things. He's cutting away overgrowth. And we look at it and go, I got to save them from it. I need to step in and go, no, 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 that doesn't need to be cut away. No, 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 that doesn't need to be cut. And I need to come in and rescue you from going through the process of the pruning that God's putting you through. And what we're doing is we're coming in and we're messing up the master gardener's plans of what he's trying to do in that person's life. And if you think about it from the outside, that is ridiculous, it's foolish, it's arrogant, and it's dangerous for that person. Because we come in and go, no, 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 God, I think I know better than you what needs to be done in their life. We see this a lot of times in the church. We look at each other and we want to tell each other what things we need to remove and what order to look the way we want you to look, to act the way we want you to act before we will love you. And what we're doing is, God, you don't really know how to prune this person. God, you don't know really how to make them strengthened and healthy. I know better so I can give them the list of how they need to do it. And that is sheer arrogance on the part of us. That is not what we are called to do. Now, the hard part of this is trying to determine what's pruning and what's people that you need to step in and help with, okay? That's the hard part. And if you're looking for an answer from me on this one, I don't have it, okay? There is no guidebook I can give you. You go, these are things that you need to step in and help, and these are things you need to allow God to let them go through to grow them and prune them. And so in those situations, what I ask of you is the same thing I do in my own life. You pray about it. Um, and you ask for God's spirit to guide you. And you start asking for God's input and you go, God, is this an area I need to step in or is this an area I need to step out and let you go to town and let you go to work? And trying to ask the spirit. And most of the time, I'll say this, God starts to give you a leaning of what's right. Okay? Now, you have to be careful. If you have overgrowth, you can confuse that signal sometimes. If you have overgrowth that you're not aware of, that God's not trimming out or you're not letting them trim out, you can always think, I need to enter in every single time. I can guarantee you this. Not every problem you run into in people's lives, you have to enter into every time. Never. You never enter all of them. God never calls you to enter all of them. Some you do. Sometimes you have to show compassion and love. Sometimes you need to step back and go, God, I let you prune them. And when the pruning's over, I'm there to help with the new growth that needs to happen. I I'm there to see that happen. All right? God wants us to grow spiritually so that we can flourish and be fruitful both spiritually and personally for his kingdom work. Um, the question we have to ask ourselves this morning is this. Are we truly willing to allow God to prune us and go, God, cut away the things that need to be cut away so that new life can begin? That's a question we have to answer. Let's pray.